motor unit. A motor unit is one motor neuron and all the muscle fibers it innervates. The axon, or nerve fiber, branches at the distal end into terminal branches and can innervate from 3 to 1,000 muscle fibers. When a nerve impulse approaches the end of an axon, it spreads out all over its terminal branches and stimulates all the muscle fibers supplied by the one motor neuron. All the muscle fibers of a motor unit contract in unison when they are stimulated by the one motor neuron. Now I'm going to give you a brief review of what cytoplasm is. Cytoplasm is the fluid portion of the cell between the nucleus and the cell membrane. It is composed of a clear gelatinous cytosol in which are embedded organelles, inclusions, and the cytoskeleton. Here's a picture of a typical cell. And again, the cytoplasm is the fluid portion of the cell between the nucleus, which is here, and the cell membrane or plasma membrane, the outside here. The organelles are housed inside the cytoplasm. And again, a review on what organelles are. Organelles are microscopic structures in a cell that carry out specialized metabolic tasks. And the organelles are nucleus, the mitochondria, lysosomes, peroxisomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, ribosomes, centrosomes, centrioles, and basal bodies. And these are all inside the cytoplasm. This leads us to the sarcoplasm. The sarcoplasm is the cytoplasm of a skeletal muscle fiber. It's occupied mainly by myofibrils, organelles such as the mitochondria, sarcoplasmic reticulum, and so on. Stored glycogen, myoglobin, and proteins are all found in the sarcoplasm. And to help you remember this term, sarco means muscle and plasm, think of cytoplasm. So sarcoplasm, that's the cytoplasm of a skeletal muscle fiber. Another quick review of what the plasma membrane is. The plasma membrane, also called the cell membrane, is a semi-permeable microscopic membrane of lipids and proteins that provides a protective barrier between the interior of the cell and the extracellular fluid. The major functions of the cell membrane are to regulate the passage of material into and out of the cell and to enclose the components of the cell. So the plasma membrane, another name for plasma membrane, is cell membrane, and that's this outer portion of the cell here. This leads us to what the sarcolemma is, and the sarcolemma is the plasma membrane of skeletal muscle. To help you remember this term, sarco again means muscle, and lemma means husk, think husk of corn, the outer layer, outer layer of the cell which provides a protective barrier between the interior of the cell and the extracellular fluid. Myofibrils. Myofibrils are long protein bundles that contain the contractile proteins myosin and actin. Muscle fibers contract by shortening of their myofibrils due to actin sliding over the myosin molecule. Myosin. Myosin is a contractile protein and makes up part of a myofibril. It's a thick protein filament. A myosin molecule is shaped like a golf club with a globular head or cross bridge projecting from it at an angle at regular intervals. Globular means globe-shaped or round or circle. So the myosin heads are globe-shaped and another name for the globular heads is cross bridges. So as you can see here in another picture, these myosin heads are called cross bridges. Actin. Actin is a contractile protein. It has a double helix shape and it makes up part of a myofibril. Sarcomere. Sarcomere is the smallest contractile unit of skeletal muscle. Each segment of a myofibril from Z-line to Z-line. 
is a sarcomere. And to help you remember this term, break it down, we know that sarco means muscle and that mere means segment. So think a muscle segment. So again, from this is a Z line here, and this is also a Z line. So from Z line to Z line is a sarcomere. And this is the smallest contractile unit of skeletal muscle. T tubules, short for transverse tubules. The function of a T tubule is to carry an electrical nerve impulse, action potential from the surface of the cell to the interior of the cell when the cell is stimulated. The word tubules means tiny tubes. In this picture here, the blue lines going across the muscle fiber, that's the T tubules. Sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a network of membranous channels that surrounds each myofibril and runs parallel with it. So in this picture here, it's the yellow and membranous channels surrounds each myofibril and runs parallel with it. And the important part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum to remember is that it's the storage site for calcium ions, triad. A triad is a T-tubule spaced between and perpendicular to two sarcoplasmic reticulum. In this picture here, the yellow surrounding the myofibril is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And again, the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores the calcium ions. The blue lines running across the myofibril or muscle fiber is the T-tubules. And a T-tubule spaced between and perpendicular to two sarcoplasmic reticulum is a triad. So there's three structures involved, two sarcoplasmic reticulum and one T-tubule. Tri stands for three, that might help you remember. A-band. The A-bands are the dark bands. And to help you remember that the dark bands are the A-bands, look at the second letter in dark, it's A. So dark bands are A-bands. An A-band is formed by thick filaments that partly overlap the thin filaments. So this dark section here is the A-band. The I-band contains only actin filaments. The I-band is the light band. It's not as dark as the A-band. And to help you remember this term, the I-band, the second letter in light is I. So we know that the light bands are the I-bands. And the I-band decreases during muscular contraction because the actin filaments are sliding over the myosin filaments. So these light bands, the actin filaments are coming inward and sliding over the myosin filaments, so the I-band is going to decrease during muscular contraction. So at the I-band, only actin filaments are located, and at the middle of the sarcomere, again, remember from Z-line to Z-line is a sarcomere. At the middle of the sarcomere, that's called the H-zone, and that's where only myosin filaments are located. The H-zone decreases during muscular contraction as actin slides over myosin. So here you have a relaxed muscle, and in the center here, only myosin filaments are located during muscular contraction. The blue here is the actin molecule, and it's going to slide inward over the myosin molecule, and the H-zone is going to decrease because there's going to be an overlap now between actin filaments and myosin filaments. Z-line. The Z-line is a thin dark line of structural proteins running through the middle of the I-band. Here's the I-band here. This dark line is the Z-line. And remember, each segment of a myofibril from Z-line to Z-line is called a sarcomere. All right, guys, that's it for the muscular system. I hope you guys learned something. Continue to study hard and have a great day. Thanks.